Hard to believe, 44 days and counting, November general election is on our doorstep. Time remaining is critical for the candidates who do, did make it through the primary. And joining me to talk about it, the chairs of their respective parties, Jennifer Horn from the GOP, and of course, Ray Buckley from the Democratic Party. Good to see you. So let's talk about the primary elections. We've had a little, you know, some time to absorb what happened. How do you think your respective parties position themselves heading into November? And we'll start with you, Jennifer. Well, we're, we think we're in a great position. We have the strongest candidates that we've had um, in a very, very long time. Senator Ayotte has done an outstanding job in Washington representing the people of New Hampshire. She's been a strong, independent voice fighting on those issues that our families and veterans and small business owners care so much about. We've got Chris Sununu uh, in running for governor, uh, one of the most experienced, qualified candidates who compares very well to his inexperienced experienced and unknown opponent on the other side. Uh, we feel really good about where we are. We've got a great ground game and we're ready to go out there and work hard and win. Chairman Buck Buckley? You only had the one primary contest, uh, the governor's race, obviously, and Colin Van Ostrom came out on top. Sure. I mean, we're a united party. We've got uh, over 26 uh, local offices already up and running uh, with over 100 staff uh, working out of them uh, in a united party uh, behind. You know, uh, our opponents, uh, the, the opponents in the primary, uh, endorsed uh, Colin, uh, both uh, Mark Connolly and uh, Steve Marchand endorsed that evening, and we had a terrific unity breakfast uh, just a couple days after that. Um, I, I think that uh, we are... Um, all working together, unlike on the Republican side, where you know Kelly Ayotte uh, won't, you know, refuses to endorse, and actually called on Frank Ginta again on primary day to uh, to resign, uh, and refuses to endorse the nominee for president, and you know the sort of the chaos that's going on in the Republican side. You compare that to the to the solid leadership that we've got from top to bottom our ticket. I will say she didn't call on him to resign again. She was asked for position change when it came to Frank Ginta, and she said that it didn't. Let's talk about the energy though on the Democratic side. A lot of people pundits. I know you love pundits. Uh, so the Democrats, you know, if there's a, a flaw heading into November, there wasn't the same kind of juice uh, flowing through their veins. I'm sorry. Same kind of energy. I mean, uh, are you are you confident that the party has the energy? Oh, it needs? absolutely. Uh, you know, presidential turnout versus presidential turnout versus a state primary. There, there's really no correlation uh, to that if you look over the the records of the years and years past. But uh, you know, you you look at you know the fact that uh, Democrats have won nine out of the last ten statewide races, and in each of the last presidential elections, we've completely swept the ticket. So we we fully anticipate that we're going to do that again. When you compare uh, the records of you know Donald Trump. Uh, who is unfit to be president uh, with uh, Hillary Clinton. You compare uh, Colin Van Ostern to, you know, the failed person that, that Chris Sununu is. I mean, Chris Sununu's family bought and bought him that ski resort, and he, they've lost, since he took over, they've lost half of uh, the customers that have gone to White, uh, to Waterville Valley. So, you know, that sort of a failed leadership isn't what we want as governor. I have no idea about so, the, uh, how many customers and skiers are going to Waterville Valley, but go ahead. Well, I'm not a skier myself. I know no, nobody in New Hampshire likes to hear that. But the uh, you know it's it's an interesting comparison that Mr. Buckley tries to make here. Uh, at the top of their ticket, they have a candidate who has been running for uh, president for 30 years. She's been in the public eye. She's been uh, an establishment Washington insider for 30 years, and she's still unable to generate the kind of enthusiasm uh, and unity and commitment from her own base that she needs to win. Uh, you want to you know, talk about Colin Van Ostern? Uh, he's a, a, a paid political operative who came to the state to work for Ray Buckley and Gene Shaheen and Maggie Hassan. Uh, his his uh, resume uh, of business is incredibly thin. Uh, he doesn't have any significant accomplishment on which to uh, base his election. And you're comparing him to somebody who has spent his entire life in public service, uh, who has uh, run a major uh, New Hampshire business, has 800 employees, you know, has grown, you know, pays 800, supports 800 jobs in our state, um, and has been on the executive council, has been a leading voice on the executive council uh, for for, for holding, you know, trying to maintain a fiscally responsible uh, New Hampshire policy. So uh, people in New Hampshire know Chris Sununu. They know who he is. They know what he stands for. I'm not worried. That said, Democrats been in the corner office for 18 in the last 20 years. Okay, 18 in the right. last 20 years for the last dozen in a row. Why is this going to be any different? Well, of course it's going to be different, and it's because of the accumulated record of the last 18 uh, years. Um, when you look at the, what's been happening in New Hampshire, we're a state that has, uh, we are near the bottom of the list for new job growth in the country. Uh, 118,000 of our uh, residents leave our state every day to go to work uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, we need a new approach, and I think that people in New Hampshire understand that. They see that 
Uh, you know, if we want our young people to come back here, we're losing young people at an unprecedented rate. After they go off and get an education, they go somewhere else to grow jobs and start their families. Um, so we need a new approach to how we grow our economy here in New Hampshire, and that means we need to elect Chris Sununu. I mean, the reality is that uh, we have a 2.6% unemployment rate. Uh, the fact is, is that uh, the economy uh, in New Hampshire is doing much better uh, than uh, much of America. And uh, when, when you look at the record of when uh, Republicans are in charge in the state uh, versus when Democrats are in charge, that's why uh, uh, the voters choose a Democrat e each and every time. You know, Colin's record of being very successful with Stonyfield Yogurt and with College for America, uh, I, and certainly his experience on the Executive Council. You know, <laughs> the other day they had a, a forum between the two candidates and. Chris Nunu didn't even know what his own record was. Uh, Colin Van Oster had to keep reminding him uh, what his position was, whether it was on his website or his record of voting. I mean, it was just a pretty embarrassing uh, performance. And it shows that he's just trying to run on the family name. And he really doesn't have any real time experience uh, in what would qualify him to be governor. All right, before we get to go ahead, and then uh, yeah, I want to ask you both. Colin Van Oster worked for two years at Stonyfield Yogurt. It was a job that was given to him by one of the largest Democratic donors in the state so that he could run for governor and say, oh, look, I worked in business. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty thin and it's pretty transparent. Uh, you know, as far as Chris Nuna or the, the economy in our state, I believe actually that our unemployment is higher than that now. I think it, was, it just went up a little bit from there. And, it's, it, and, it, and what that is is a reflection of the economy in Massachusetts. It's not a reflection of the economy in New Hampshire. We need to grow new jobs in New Hampshire. As long as we think that the best way to keep people in New Hampshire employed is by sending them to Massachusetts, we're not going to have the growth we need right here at home. Let me ask you guys this, and obviously these are issues that are going to be debated thoroughly over the next uh, few weeks, but for you personally, as a head of your, your, your parties here, and it, this applies to both of you, whether it's the Bernie Sanders phenomenon or the Donald Trump uh, uh, craze that was out there, how different has this cycle been as for your experience, how difficult has it been to get everybody under the same umbrella after uh, the conventions and things along those lines and after Bernie Sanders got out? And uh, just your overall take on what these voters are feeling now. Is it changing? Well, I, I think that uh, we had a terrific national convention. Obviously, Hillary got a big bump out of that when uh, Bernie enthusiastically endorsed uh, Hillary's candidacy, and Bernie came back to New Hampshire and spent the entire day campaigning uh, for uh, Hillary and, and Tim No, he did A lot of Bernie supporters yeah. were very unhappy, and well, we saw that. Well, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of them, since uh, the vast 97% of them are supporting Hillary now. And if you look at the numbers here in New Hampshire, uh, the uh, alternative, uh, Jill Stein, is in the lower single digits, 1-2% uh, here in the state, uh, so it's not really catching on. We have a very united ticket, uh, starting with Hillary Clinton all the way down. So you're convinced that uh, no no sour grapes on the part of uh, Bernie Sanders supporters? No, I, I think that, that you look at the Democratic activists, and, and they are enthusiastic and active and involved, and one only has to, to come into one of our 26 local offices to see the sort of energy. Uh, we're, we have a ground operation like I've never seen before, and that's local people going door to door and talking to their neighbors and their families. Uh, that's really what's going to make the difference in November. Same question for you and Donald sure. Trump. Well, it's it's clear that Mr. Buckley's not listening to the um, the Bernie Sanders supporters today any more than he was during the primary because they're all out there, a lot of them out there that are very unhappy uh, and, and are looking at Jill Stein very seriously and we've seen the impact that Jill Stein is having in some of these polls across the country. On our side, we have a, a, a tremendous level of enthusiasm. We've brought new people out voting and new people have gotten involved that haven't been involved in politics either ever or for years. We just opened our office in um, Nashville last night. Half the people in the room are new new to politics and new to the party. Uh, there's, there's an energy on the Republican side that's drawing people out of their homes uh, into the process, into the system, um, and they're enthusiastic and they're excited about it. And, it. and whether it's the top of the ticket or some in the middle, somewhere down below, they know that we need a new direction. They know that we need change. People are feeling the weight and the burden of the last eight years, and they're looking for a new, more optimistic, forward-looking uh, vision for our state and for our country, and that's what they see when they look at Republican candidates. Je Jennifer, I mean, that, that that is ridiculous. There's nobody that's talking about the Republican message being uh, forward-thinking or optimistic or hopeful. Uh, it is completely negative. It is it, it is about going backwards, whether it's Chris Sununu running for governor, Kelly Ayotte's candidate for the uh, Senate, either congressional race or Donald Trump, your presidential race. It is all about fear. It's about anger. It, it is not about anything about future and hopeful. And, and let me tell you, hope beats fear every time. And the hopeful candidate, the hopeful uh, ticket is the Democratic ticket. You know, I 
I find Mr. Buckley's um, evaluation fascinating, if not ludicrous, on um, you know the entire thing. Um, Kelly Ayotte has one of the the most uh, well-respected records in the U.S. Senate. She's been a leading voice for uh, moving forward to protect our nation and national security. She but has she fought doesn't show to protect up at the Homeland Security. The, she has understand. fought to protect the uh, uh, the right of women to access the health care that they need for critical tests like mammograms. Uh, she's By been a leading Planned voice Parenthood to. Six times? Um, Chairman, she's been. It's we're used to raise rudeness. That's okay. Um, she has been uh, a leading voice trying to untangle the red tape that small business owners, um, you know, have to go through every time they want to hire a new employee. And you compare that to Maggie Hassan, who has zero experience in national security, uh, is unable to answer a question without stuttering and, and, and working her way around it a half a dozen times. And when it came to being able to simply talk about, you know, the honesty or the integrity of their nominee for president, couldn't answer the question three times. So I can go through the list, whether it's Chris Sununu or Frank Ginter or anybody else, and lay out the very strong ar argument for strong Republican leadership. Let me just ask you, really, because time's flying. Uh, top of the ticket is obviously a liability, maybe that's the word, on both sides, just because there's so many people. Donald Trump is divisive. Hillary Clinton has baggage as well. We know about that, and who knows where it's going to be headed. Are you convinced, Chairman Buckley, that, uh, that down ballot, the races here in New Hampshire will be insulated from any questions that people have about Hillary Clinton and her uh, her trustworthiness. Uh, you know, absolutely. You know, when when Politifact uh, takes a look at uh, the trustworthiness of either one of the, the candidates, uh, two thirds of the time they rate pants on fire for Donald Trump. I mean, he's truly somebody that you can't trust, somebody you can't believe. And on the flip side, uh, when Hillary Clinton speaks, it actually has rated them her as one of the most trustworthy people that's ever run for president. That's Politifact. That's that's not me. That's not a Democrat saying that. That is the Pulitzer Prize winning Politifact. All right, same question well, for you because Donald Trump. Has the same. Listen, the, I, again, I, I love how um, how Mr. Buckley, you know, the, the filter he uses when he looks at the world. Uh, Hillary Clinton is clearly and widely poll after poll after poll after poll seen as being the most untrustworthy, dishonest person in politics in the history of our country. She lies instinctively. I think that uh, when people in New Hampshire go to the polls on Election Day, uh, they're going to look at each race individually. They're going to look at these candidates one by one. Uh, there's no question that uh, Kelly Ayotte has earned uh, the respect and the vote uh, and the affection of people across the state, that people like Chris Sununu and Frank Ginta, they have, they have records to run on. Uh, they are strong, independent fighters for our state. They have strong records. I think that voters are going to look at these races individually, and they're going to choose Republicans as they go down the ticket. We have 30 seconds, and you get the last word since we started with Jennifer. Go ahead, please. No, I, I think it's going to be a terrific turnout year. Uh, there are a lot of people that are very interested and, and very focused on this. Uh, I look uh, at our candidates, our ticket, uh, compare that to the Republican side, and I feel very confident that we're going to have a very successful year once again. And hopefully we all come together and start solving some of these problems after November's election. Guys, good to see you. Best Great. luck moving Thanks. forward, and talk Thank to you, you soon.